Alright, so to fully set up the character, we're still missing a couple of crucial steps. So, in the first tutorial, we set up our master material um, so that all the textures are linked, there should be no warnings. So, to apply all the materials to the character, we will have to relink them to the material instances that are going to be used on the character. So, um, this is the master material instance for the character and then all the other um, parts of the body, like the cape, are going to reference this instance. So let's pick the master material and apply it here. So once again we're going to reset all the textures to use uh, the textures linked in the master material. Uh, don't worry, you won't have to do this for all of the instances. Okay. So now let's select this instance and apply it as the parent. As you can see, um, all the different textures that we linked are there, except for the base, um, the base textures that we are still going to, well, we were going to have to replace those anyway because they're different for each body part. So for the cape, it stays the same. Um, actually for the body, we have to change this to the body textures. And actually, uh, just to preview all the changes that we are making, I'm going to quickly apply all the material instances to the skeleton mesh. So as you can see, when it prompted us to pick a skeleton, I picked the Tinker Skull Mesh. Uh, skeleton, um, it works with this character. Right now you can see the colors are a bit crazy, we're gonna fix that later. Alright, let's save this for now. There's still a bunch of issues with this mesh that we're going to fix later down the line. Um, let's update the materials first. Okay, so the cape is already fixed. Um, the body as well. Let's check this. Pants look good. Just a little pink.
right so now we have all the materials applied um, but as you can see right now um, still a couple of materials that are not using the cloth shader are not applied so we also have to apply those let's start with the head material Once again, it looks like we need to do a little bit of fixing, um, but this should be fairly quick. All we need to do is plug in these three maps for the head, uh, the head textures. Okay, so this is the material instance that I'm using on the head. Um, really, there's, uh, you would think there's no reason for this instance to exist because it's the only instance of one material. But in general, it's good practice to not apply master materials to any assets. Unless it's really only uniquely crafted for that one asset. Okay, so the head looks good now. Um, Let's go through the other materials that are still missing. So this is kind of like the worst case scenario where you imported your files and all your um, references are broken. Usually that should not happen, um, but just in case this guide is going to help you um, restore everything to its original form. So as you can see in this eyeshader, I'm using a fairly basic uh, clear coat setup. Um, oh, I forgot one of the textures. That looks good so far, um, as much as I can tell from this ball. the only material that we need to fix is the eyeshadow
we're all set in terms of materials. Um, now there's a couple of additional fixes that we need to do for everything to be set up correctly and then I'm going to quickly run you through how you can adjust the materials to achieve different results. So as you can see right now the cloth simulation is um, clipping through the character um, which is of course not the intended behavior. So we're going to assign a couple of physics assets to fix that. First of all the overall uh, physics asset for the character just in case you need that. as you assign these physics assets you should see the cloth um, jumping into place um, so that it's not clipping through the mesh all right so we're all set Now let's quickly go through the materials again and see how we can modify them. So, first of all, we should probably get rid of that pink color in uh, the cloth. Um, right now, the reason for this pink color is that this uh, leather switch variable is set to 1. So, what does this variable do? Basically, instead of using the tinting setup that is uh, used usually for most of the layers this will basically just use a color map as is so full RGB colors and the roughness uh, will be taken from the alpha channel of that color map so this is in case you don't want a tinting setup and you just want like a texture with like a lot of different color information uh, tinting might look too monotone for you so you can just go ahead and do that as well um, in the provided example files I have a leather texture and this texture is using full RGB colors so if I just plug that in here you can immediately see uh, it, it looks a lot more natural <coughs> of course the other way to fix this problem is by just turning off this leather switch so if I return this to its original values I have the cotton again and I just turn off this leather switch there we go now I have colors again um, and I can go ahead and tint it in any way I want so in the first tutorial I briefly hinted at the overlay functionality and um, I'm going to quickly preview it here. The easiest way to preview it is without the paint, so I'm just going to turn this off. Alright, so the overlay one is going to affect the first cloth layer, which is this darker red brown part. And as you can see, it subtly tints the whole. Um, the whole cloth uh, slightly in whatever hue I pick. I can reduce the brightness um, to reduce the effect and I can also reduce the saturation um, 
but as you can see there's still sort of an impact happening depending on what brightness level I choose. Uh, there's another slider which is called overlay strength and this one modifies um, the uh, overall well overlay strength as it says. Um, basically this is just a multiply so it has the same effect as just tinting this black um, but it can be an easier way to control the intensity of the overlay. Okay, so um, this should be it. Once again, if you have any additional questions or anything is unclear, um, feel free to drop by and polycount on the thread and ask any further questions you might have. Um, another thing, just to um, reiterate this, if you want to adjust um, the layered materials that are being used, you basically just have to plug in different materials in the layer texture slots and then adjust the colors like this. Uh, like I showed in the first video, you can um, individually tweak metalness for each layer um, as well as normal map intensity and tiling. So this combined with the different tinting textures uh, turns into like a really powerful tool that can achieve a large variety of different results.